Hey Eric, have you yep. seen my new camera? Um, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the blue Nikon <laughs> or the blue Komodo? <laughs> is, it a, is it a Nikon or a yeah. Nikon? That was Brand, Brandon's idea. Yeah, <laughs> but it's brilliant. I love it. Yep. Yep. So what are you um, doing there down where? What's going on down there? Oh, just had to get out of the house. Anchorage has been way too slow, cold, snowy. So I needed to see some salt water that's not mud and frozen over like it is in Anchorage. So I drove down the Kenai Peninsula and I'm um, here in Homer today. Yeah, I just had to get out of the house, try and check out these winter birds, you know, this time of year. It's a little early for the um migrants to arrive yet so we're probably only a few weeks away from maybe like waterfowl starting to show up but that means the wintering birds are here so long-tailed ducks all the scoters like white wing surf scoter just the sea otters are having pups and stuff so trying to capture them and hoping for owls but that hasn't been too successful and then lots of the small songbirds like we've been talking about in anchorage all the rosy or the uh, crossbills finch species Man, down here, it's a whole another game. <laughs> I, uh, the, there's white wing crossbills and red crossbills, pine siskins and um, common red poles. And there's just flocks of hundreds and hundreds of them that just move around and fly. So That's I've been cool. trying to connect with them, but you guys know how challenging it is to try and film a small bird, especially if you're trying to do telephoto and right. manual focus. <laughs> so I'll have a few little pretty shots of them, but. Yeah, it's been a challenge. Um, snow buntings are down here too, but I haven't been able to get on them. They'll take off before spring gets here. And the gray crowned rosy finches are what I was really hoping to shoot because they're just such a really pretty bird. But man, all those birds, they're just flighty and take off. Have so, you seen them or not? Yeah, yeah, I've been with them. Actually, um, yesterday was kind of a slow start. And so I hit up a friend that I have down here. He runs um, Wilderness Birding Adventures. If you're looking for a birding specific trip, not necessarily photography, um, his name's Aaron and he runs that fantastic guy, but he has some feeders up at his house. And so I took our buddy Ray over there. I'm like, Ray, you gotta come over and <laughs> check this out. And you're just sitting there just, you know, birds constantly flying, Ray standing, you know, two feet from the feeder and they're just zipping in front past of him and landing on his head, landing on his camera. and. You know, he's taking cell phone pictures from like three inches away of the birds and they just don't even care. They're so like drunk with food or something that, or maybe that mob mentality, they just are not so skittish. And yeah, we were just trying to shoot all the small birds yesterday morning. and It was, it was fun, but I, it's so hard to try and, and shoot them. You know, they're, they fly up and perch for two seconds and then they take off and trying to whip the camera around it's nearly impossible and you're doing all video and no stills right <laughs> yeah all video and yeah running annual focus so by the time you get focus on them you hope that you get a couple seconds before they take off but yeah that was really cool that, that spot man is and there was another place i went to with my buddy aaron another private property and holy moly she had twice what aaron had at his property it was just really I mean, the trees are just littered with birds and you try and have a conversation and all you hear is just the cacophony of birds. <laughs> song. Did you record it's some audio? It's really cool. I wanted to, but you know how it is here at Homer. It's just constant boat noises and generators and airports and anything I've tried to record is just dominated by airplanes flying over boat engines and generators and stuff. So unfortunately not. I was thinking maybe I should try to find a spot along the highway that where it's not around any town and just pull over and maybe wait for no traffic and try and record there. But I don't know where else to get it. I mean, they've been moving all through the, the flats, the, the lowlands and feeding on the grass seed because they had a lot of snow here, but it melted down to pretty little bit. So there's a lot of exposed grasses. So I've been seeing them moving along. I mean, anywhere along the spit here, you'll see small birds feeding along on the seeds and stuff. So it's just a matter of trying to find them and then get set up in time. But um, on the road here is just too too noisy. You tried owls, but not a lot of luck. Yeah, I did. We did have. I had luck um, two nights with a great gray owl, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. 
so I do have some some footage from that. Um, it's in a neighborhood which is not my favorite place to ever have to be, you know. And I hate to spend a lot of time with owls just because late winter it's kind of their probably their slimmest time of the year. But um, it was successful in hunting, so I felt good. I, I probably would have left if it wasn't yeah. doing well. But yeah, a couple couple of shots of them. That's um, awesome. Once I get it pulled together, I think they're pretty cool. Yeah, the owl flying down the tree. I couldn't follow it. Um, Why but, not? Yeah, that's, I need that thing to fly all day long. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one <laughs> shot. <laughs> one time I tried to pull with it and it like went like this and then choo, went right out of the frame. Like, all right, <laughs> forget that. But it, yeah, I landed on the ground and was really like rustling and trying to find the mouse and it would like fly up and then pounce again and try and grab and like dig around and then eventually it pulled a mouse up that's awesome and then it was looking for another one so yeah i think i can cut it all and make a you know nice little tight sequence thing but so was it in the same place cool. we were filming them last year or was it in a no spot? it's it's um way out the road a ways i know someone that lives far out there and they just happened to see it while driving into town oh good so you didn't have so. a huge amount of traffic going by either no there's really not many people i mean there's um not too many people where i'm at but it's kind of like on a one of those quiet roads where everyone just kind of there's five people that live on this quiet road and you hate to <laughs> interfere but luckily there was a lady out walking her uh couple dogs and she had a little horse and two kids and i just like oh did you see the owl over there in my van so she kind of I saw the birding plate and like, oh, I wonder what they're doing. And she's like, oh yeah, we've actually been watching that for the last couple of weeks. So you're more than welcome to park over here in my garage or in my driveway and oh, check cool. things out. So at least they were nice, but I still, I, I don't want to be that guy that's driving in his van every night in their neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> just because she said it's okay. The other guy might not like it. Any short ears? No short ears. Yeah, I've yeah. asked, and the, there was a couple early in the winter, and um, they've since gone. Maybe even like right at the start of winter. And I was trying to ask Aaron, and yeah, he said it just seems it's like nothing. it's really sporadic. And yeah, they haven't. I haven't really seen many reports. I tried to look through eBird just to see, but a lot of those owl species, like we talked about, are protected, it's and hard, you can't man. really see the sightings. You can maybe see that one was reported, but. You won't know specifically where. And then on eBird, you're as specific as like the Kenai Peninsula Borough. So it's encompassing right. hundreds of miles of area. So yeah, that's not, not the key to find them. Just got to get lucky. And then how about down there in the rocks? Anything interesting? Yeah, there hasn't been um, too much along the beach. The, the first few days, it was probably like 25 degrees and the whole harbor was completely almost completely frozen over and kind of the backside uh, i guess would be like the north side of the spit was like for 100 yards offshore ice it had all just gathered up kind of in that mud bay harbor side mm -hmm. and was so iced out that nothing like i was hoping for the long-tailed ducks up close everything was kind of pushed off mm -hmm. and then it was so windy that the other side here where the waves were just you know blasting in and that that wasn't really productive um yesterday ray and i found a flock of rock sandpipers oh. down towards the harbor but um i mean they're just in their kind of drab winter plumage and in the harbor so it's kind of hard to get anything real great but i got a couple clips of them that's um, cool just to shoot and they have there's probably about 250 rock sandpipers and oh, um, usually there's one or two dunlin that overwinter with them and I think I counted 38 Dunlin this year. So wow. a lot of Dunlin stuck around for some reason to hang out with them. But yeah, there hasn't been much else. There's eagles flying around, but nothing's really perched. There's a lot of otters offshore. But you know, now that it's calm, the water's pretty flat. You could glass out here and you, know, you probably see 20, 30 otters, but nothing in range to really yeah. shoot. So Bummer. Yeah. But yeah, it's been pretty good. That's nice cool, to get man. out. Ice in the bay, yeah, though. How long have you been down there? Oh, since Monday, so five What's days today, now. Friday. Oh, that's Friday, cool. Yeah, yeah. Just came down through the week and figured it'd be nice, quiet, slow time of year. Not too much happening here. Everything's still pretty well closed up, and so yeah, it's been been nice. But I have seen quite a few photographers. There's been a couple of local people here, and I've seen people coming in uh, from going out on boats. So 
must be enough happening that <laughs> it's still a hop in place. Did you have to wake Ray up to get down there? Uh, I left on Monday and he didn't come down until like Wednesday. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, still in his winter hibernation. He wasn't sure if he was going to come down. And then I sent him the owl and he's like, eh, maybe I better go. Yeah. <laughs> so luckily we got it last night with him. It was very short. We, we spotted it thinking we weren't going to find it. He spotted it off and he was all excited and like, jump out. Let me go find a spot at the park. And it pretty quickly flew to another spot where it was really hard to shoot, but he got a couple of nice flight shots of it with like the wings kind of feathers spread oh, and the face cool. getting some light. So yeah. it looks pretty neat, but then it just was gone. So, you know, those last two hours that we were hoping maybe to be able to find it were a bust and we came back to the harbor and just wandered around. It was such a nice night last, last night. You know, it probably warmed up to about 35 yesterday and got sunny and once the high tide went out, a lot of the ice has just been streaming out the harbor and moving back around the spit out to the ocean. So the things will be changed probably today. I'll go make a couple rounds and see um, if the harbor still has ice. The ice is really convenient for the sea otters because they have the pups. And so they'll, you know, leave their pup. A lot of times they're just, you know, floating around on the water. They'll try and find something to attach them to. But here in the harbor, they just throw them up on the ice and then go down and I mean they'll literally grab them by the scruff and like throw them up on the ice and I watched one mom grab this baby by the scruff and it I don't know why but she just took it off the ice and they both went underwater she just like drug it underwater I think she just wanted to try a different spot to fish or <laughs> look for funny. food and they popped up a couple boat slips over and she threw it back on the ice and back to hunting she went well, and they're she's always like look, look here too, sunny yeah. boy you need to see this you need to get down here and <laughs> yeah. see this this is really yeah. good hunting teach them the lessons <laughs> like, well they're always well, whining they're when the mom leaves oh yeah, yeah. they're cry 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 yeah but on the ice here these ones they've all just been snoozing i mean they're like you know they look dead they're just laying there motionless and how funny until the mom pops up and they make a noise and then they kind of like startle around and then just plop <laughs> back down <laughs> have their little milk mustache around their mouths that's and awesome they're pretty <laughs> were you able to get through. footage of them or are they too far out a little bit yeah that's always one of those species too where I've, i i mean there's so much noise and boat traffic but when it's people wandering around they don't really care but when you you know go towards them and you crouch down or something it's not normal behavior so i try to be really conscious about not pushing them off or making them feel too bad but because of the ice it's kind of nice because usually in that harbor you know it's not the most ideal spot with all the boat traffic and you get the waves the boats moving around all the reflections but yeah that ice there's no reflection so you know you can shoot down and actually have what looks like a really nice you know remote <laughs> location in the harbor so that's that's kind of a, a plus, but that's the bummer of the ice all moving out of out of there today. That we probably will be back to bright orange buoys and <laughs> blue and red boats that you know glare off the water. Right. But that's that's the reality. It's they're in there using the harbor because it's quiet and convenient and safe for them, and they can you know when the ice isn't there, they just haul up on the the dock, and obviously you can tell there's you know crap all over the the docks, <laughs> all the shells and poop everywhere. But um, yeah, the ice was probably awesome for them. Hmm. It was actually so, so bad, like a month or two ago, there was so much ice in the harbor. Christy was showing me videos of people ice skating around in the harbor. Really? It was that frozen over, yeah. I mean, you can see chunks of ice that are on top that are, you know, a good three, four inches thick, at least. Hmm. It must've had some serious cold. But... Yeah, and that doesn't happen in Homer no. very often. No, yeah. That's pretty, pretty far south for that kind of freeze. Mm -hmm. Huh. Are there yeah. water taxis still running? Yep. I've been seeing them run out um, pretty regularly. Those are the few boats that I do see going out. A couple people going out fishing, it looks like. You know, we tried yeah, to, you sent us a video mm -hmm. from your Yeah, phone, the I boat's think. trying to go out in the ice when the ice was at its worst, yeah, chugging along. <laughs> Send us any video you have of... Ver, uh, horizontal video and I'll throw it in on the podcast as you're talking yeah, about yeah. it or, of anything you you have or are you building a yeah, little yeah, YouTube quest video man it's so hard here especially when you're by yourself <laughs> to try to film yourself while like there's no subject yep. in front of you <laughs> yep. you know I'm working hard just to make Ray not 
get bored with <laughs> trying to find subjects. You guys would probably snooze through that video if you watched us <laughs> driving around like, where should we go now? Where should we do next? <laughs> but no, I, at the end of it, I think I'll have enough to make it look like I did something. But yeah, I don't know that I'm... <laughs> This is probably going to be more, maybe I'll finally get a, a show reel together and uh, we'll add some of these pretty winter scenes to the the other summer stuff and fall stuff that's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I think I realize after about day two that I don't know what I can do <laughs> while I'm here <laughs> with this. So we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> it's a challenge. It's cool. The whole solo filming and freezing your butt off carrying the camera around trying to find stuff that's cool yes, you guys have been busy too huh? oh man <laughs> dude we we went on an adventure <laughs> and we yeah. and adventures were had <laughs> yeah yeah we wanted to go out and do wild horses okay so the wild horses feral horses whatever you want to call them uh colorado has these horses up north and they've been there for a long time and we wanted to go up and film and photograph them my goal was to get a print worthy photograph from it and then we wanted a youtube quest video out of it and so i mean just packing for it it's been a while for me to go yeah. for a wildlife trip it's been all commercial stuff here recently and I just, I brought too much. And go. so we took the Jeep, which is already small. I show up at Michael's house. He's in the same boat as me, I think. <laughs> and so we like just, we have the Jeep just full. Like we're, we shoved it all in. It's, it's in there, but it, like we're not getting anything out. We start making our way out there and it's four hours. And the, the entire state's under a, winter weather advisory right so everyone's no, really. hopped up and scared and so we make it over the pass but we're, it's slow going because of the snow and semis and chains and all this stuff we finally get there we go out into the field and we like there's no one else out there no one had been out there for days probably so we're the only ones making tracks in this fresh snow and we start spotting horses like almost we maybe half an hour off of the, the main road and started spotting horses and a lot of deer, a lot of deer. Mm, wow. And we just kept spotting horses and horses, but there was only an hour, maybe hour and a half of light. And so we were like, we're just going to go scout it out on the first night when we get there. And then we're going to go back to the hotel. So we ended up doing this loop, but we probably saw, I don't know how many horses that first night, Michael, it was a lot. Yeah. I don't even remember. How many? But it was, you know, we were like. Probably a couple of bands. I mean, maybe 20. Yeah. Maybe. And we were like, all right, they're here. We're yeah. good to go. And so we turned around and left. And we left in the dark. Get to the hotel, get checked in, go to sleep. Oh, we ate some terrible Mexican food, actually. <laughs> terrible, like terrible Mexican food. So we go back to the hotel room, go to sleep, wake up. So it snowed again. And so we get back out there. And we finally found some horses and so we we started filming i'm cliff notes on some of this we'll have a whole video out on all this stuff so you'll see it in the youtube <laughs> but we start uh photographing and filming and there's some cool interactions like two stallions came together and started fighting and we got i got some pictures of that and i think michael got video of it so that was really cool what are you getting cold Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt your story. <laughs> You're fine. I'm just <laughs> It's only like it's only like forty degrees in here. Yeah, no. <laughs> My coffee's not working. <laughs> and it was just uh it was awesome. And so we uh, we were like, this is gonna be a great trip. <laughs> just to back up to what Brandon was saying, I'd been out here filming before, right? right. And but it was a yeah. lot I was looking at some old pictures and some were two thousand eleven, so that's what, thirteen years ago. Wow. And then I all the way up to like 2017 pretty much when i moved to alaska was when i quit going because you just don't have enough time to do everything right and that's why we went in march this year because i'm still here in colorado and it just seemed like a good time to go the the good thing was is i'd never been out there in the snow so that's a whole different 
deal. And you never know. I mean, with Colorado, you get snow, you don't, it melts fast. You know, the chance of us getting snow was really cool because it's mm. not, I would say there's more time without snow than with snow by a long shot out there, yeah. but we did get the snow. And that first night when we did go out there, we saw tons of deer, which was really cool. And very interesting because I don't think I'd ever saw a deer out there before in those kinds of numbers. But what was odd about it is the next two days that we were there, I don't think we saw, but maybe a handful of other mm -hmm. deer. So I don't know where they all went, but um, it was kind of amazing to see that many up there in those snowy conditions. And then as we did start seeing horses, it was like, cool. But like Brandon said, it's going to get dark and we were still exploring and I knew all those roads way back when, but I'm like, I don't know, are they closed or are they, are yeah. they still going to be open? And we didn't want to get too far back in there because you can go quite a ways back and get lost pretty easily. Not lost as in lost, but lost as in some getting to some cool areas. And we were just going to run out of light. <clears throat> so we headed back out the next morning, as Brandon said, we got in there and we saw, I know we counted over a hundred different individuals because mm -hmm. we were traveling right mm -hmm. so you know you're not duplicating the counts but then you start making these loops and then you come back and then you start who knows yeah. if we're seeing the same horses or other horses but in total if you're counting duplicates i mean there's a couple 200 200 250 horses so that we many. probably saw wow. and like brandon said it was you know that storm moved through and my experience with those horses has been while they don't they'll tolerate you for sure. You know, you can get out of your, you can get out, set up a tripod and they're not going to cruise. But that first morning, there wasn't a one of them that was like going to stick around. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, really? what is going on? You know, did the, has the environment changed enough where they get persecuted enough when they get yeah. caught or there's too many photographers out there or what, but they were just, anytime we see a horse, a band of horses, they would just cruise. So, I was like, oh, this is going to suck because I'm all excited for Brandon to get some really cool shots because horse <laughs> pictures sell really well. Right. And there's a lot of interest in horses. So I really mm -hmm. wanted to get him to get his shots. But I'm thinking, man, this is not going to work out so well. But I think it was really depend. And I told Brandon this when we were out there. I think it was the storm. I think once the storm was over, they were all just full of just like energy. And yeah. they're like, hey, we're just going to go trotting along. And they wouldn't even trot. Out, they would trot on the little roads that we were on, just like little two tracks. And so we couldn't even get ahead of them to try to get a shot. We couldn't do anything. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, we were just pushing them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'd have to stay way, way back and just watch yeah. their butts. But that was, um, that was it. And then as Brendan said, we finally found a group later on that day where they, I said, let's just park and walk and just go slow act like a horse, you know, don't mm -hmm. go directly at them. And that's when we started getting the cool stuff. Well, before so now that, that just though, gets us to the, before oh, that though, we found a uh, sage grouse. And so oh, cool. yeah. there was a group hubba, of like, hubba. what was there? Nine yeah. that we ended up counting, Michael? Nine. And yeah, they were, they didn't, they let us get out and film even. Well, Michael yeah. film. I didn't take any photos cause. I don't know enough about the Lex and, you know, I know that they will do their whole ritual, mating ritual mm -hmm. in the snow for sure. But yeah. I kind of think we're a little bit on the really early stages of that. And I don't know if the place where we saw them was a lek. It definitely could have been a lek because it had all the properties where it's an open area surrounded by sagebrush. Mm -hmm. So, and we didn't, I think if they would have stayed in that lek, which was very close to the road, I would have we would have probably drove right by them because if they just hunker in next to that sage. Yeah, we would have never seen them. But what happened is one walked across the road and you know, it's just such a big bird. You're like, holy yeah. moly, that's a sage grouse. And so we saw that and then another one appeared and then we started looking around off to the right and there's, you know, we counted, I think eventually nine of them. Yeah. So that's really cool. man, if that is a luck <laughs> and we marked it on our GPS, that would definitely be worth, yeah. exploring a little bit more because you know how it is. I mean, it's hard oh, to find it's a so fun. Yeah. It's hard to get access or even find one. And then they yep. fall out of use after, 
people find out about them and start crushing them. Yeah. Well, and that's the problem. One of my, my best friend here in Colorado works with the division of wildlife and I was telling him about it and he's like, well, do not say where you are at and do exactly. not give out. And I'm like, <laughs> of course I wouldn't do that. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, um, to find a lek, I think is like finding a needle in a haystack and we just happen to look onto it. So yep. whether we get back out there while the breeding season is going, I don't know, but it should be fun. But I think you need at least a week. Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I mean, when I've done like sharp tails, you, know, you could go get in there super quiet early in the morning and then like one raptor flies over and it's all done. You know, that mm-hmm. whole day's done or whatever. And it's, so that's at least for that, unless you get so lucky in that first day. That, yeah. Well, with the Flies sharp tails, I did sharp tails with, with Ron before and the sharp tails mm-hmm. we were filming. If they got boogered off the, off the luck, these mm-hmm. would return. So you, it was oh, like, yeah. it was kind of cool. Sage grouse, however, yeah, they wouldn't, they don't come back. So if yeah. you have anything, a coyote, a raptor, <laughs> you know, you make too much noise in a blind or whatever, they're gone. You're done for the day. So then you, and, but chances are that, you know, if you didn't do anything stupid and it was just some anomaly, come back the next day and they're going to be right back. Yeah. Exactly. But you got to be set up an hour before the sun comes up. You got to be hunkered down and it's just a whole deal to, to make it work. But the reward is huge if you can find that proper spot. Well, and I think the only reason we spotted it is because we had come through that drift where I maybe wasn't paying the most attention, trying to eat pretzels, and then went from like maybe medium uh, attention to like high attention. And so we were both watching the road because the the snow, would, it would the wind was blowing pretty good, and so it would drift, and yeah. we had to bust through a lot of drifts in the Jeep. But um, yeah, it was just right there next to the road. It was cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of birds out there. I think you'd have a heyday with the birds. Oh, man. Just, yeah, be a fun you know, the horned larks. Out. Horned mm-hmm. larks were everywhere. There was probably, I don't know, we probably saw a thousand. They were yeah. everywhere. Yeah, everywhere That's you so go. so cool. Yeah. I didn't get a single picture then, of them, though. <laughs> yeah, or, quite a few raptors. Yeah. I got the horned larks in video. Actually, they were like mulling around with the. The sage grouse, yeah. which is kind of mm. cool. So there, yeah. there was a golden eagle out there. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a. Well, we There's saw an owl stuff. at night. Scared the crap out of me because it was sitting on a post and it was coming in for a landing. So yeah, and he thought it was a deer coming oh, right out of the road. Like, so. I was like, "We're gonna get hit." Here we go. It's coming right out of the Gosh, why is this deer coming so fast? Okay, so like that's first day. Well, that's not even the first yeah. day. So we get to this point where like we're gonna go up here kind of a high point we're gonna glass and and we'll be we'll be good to go we'll we'll be ready for yeah, this is like three o'clock and by this time it's kind of cleared there's sporadic clouds it's more sunny than than cloudy and the wind is kind of howling yeah it's ripping yeah. okay so now go and we get out like the very edge of this point and we hear this noise from the jeep and so we kind of do the like double take at each other. Like, did you hear that? Yeah. I shut it down. We popped the hood and we threw a serpentine belt. Okay. No big deal. But it's like, it wasn't just like a snap. It was like noodles that it turned it into spaghetti. <laughs> and so we, we, there's like that mini panic attack. Like, do I have another serpentine belt in here? So we start ripping the Jeep apart because, of course, the tools are in the bottom of everything because they're going to... No, hold on. Before you go too far, yeah. all of this is going to be put into a really nice package on YouTube. So everybody should make sure they go check out the YouTube video <laughs> right. because it's going to be really cool. And the reactions of... Because I can remember asking Brandon, I'm like, well, you've got an extra belt, right? <laughs> like, obviously, you are prepared, yeah, yeah. right? You know, and knowing Brandon, he's guess, he's like me and you... Eric, we're, we're generally prepared because you do end up out by yourself. But there's that yeah. moment so, um, where you're like. And he looked at, I asked him and I was like, you got another belt, right? And I looked at him with expecting a very significant look of confidence in this reaction that, yeah, well, of course you idiot. I've got an extra. But he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, we're 45 minutes, 45 miles from the nearest town. Yeah. So 
then and nobody's out there. Like hard to rain. We're the only people out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So at that point, when he said no, I'm like, oh, that changed the <laughs> complexity of this whole. Yeah, I was situation. like, I don't know. I think so. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, to get to all my spare parts, you got to pull this drawer out with all my camping stuff in it, dig into a like a cubby, and I had one. So good job, Brandon. But yeah, I did the oh, for that. <laughs> oh, that's not even the worst part about all this. So we get the serpentine belt on. We get it all changed out. Which Jeep, by the way, yeah. if you have a Wrangler to take your alternator off, which you have to take the bracket off to get the serpentine belt on, you're going to need three different sockets to get that bracket off. You need a 13, <laughs> a 15, and a 16. I don't know why they do that, but it's a pain in the butt. And so we get this bracket off. We get it all lined up. And I remember looking at Michael and going, I wonder what made the serpentine belt fail. And, and then it was. Yeah. And I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking. Was that. I was like, oh, I just wore out. Work. But he's yeah. like, no, that ha- something had to make that fail. And, oh, and here's the other funny thing. The check engine light had been going on and off all day. <laughs> but just for a split second, it would be yeah. like, bling. Yeah. And you'd hear the little ding in the car, but it would yeah. go off right away. So we're like, huh. So he does a code check. And we're thinking that came up the steering control. Well, it came module. up as a steering control yeah. module. So that was the first mistake is just assuming that that was it all day long. Mm-hmm. Hindsight, what was probably happening is that belt was slipping. Yeah. The computer was recognizing that, but it was slipping ever so that. slightly that it would just come on and go off. And we just assumed it was whatever the stupid steering thing was. And, Oh man, we learned so much. There's so many lessons to be learned out of this whole deal. And it's such a good refresher. And hopefully this yeah. podcast and our video will be a good refresher for everybody because well, cause it, it just gets just, worse from here. Yeah. It just, it, it piles on. Uh, yeah. It was a mess. So we got the belt on. I stay outside. I look at, I'm watching it as he starts it. And immediately the, belt starts slipping off of one of the pulleys that was on the power mm-hmm. steering pump. Yeah. So now we're about half of the belt is on the pulley and half of it's not. And I'm like, Whoa, cut it, cut it. Yeah. <laughs> and we're thinking now what? Cause if it's, yeah, yeah. so obviously something's wrong with the power steering pump, but then to try to diagnose it out there in the field. Plus keep in mind that it's freaking cold. Yeah. <laughs> And we are shivering. I mean, we both don't want to put on too many layers and we don't want to get all of our stuff all really greasy and dirty. And so yeah. I'm like gutting it out. I'm like, okay, we'll get this fixed and we'll be back in. He's just going to come on and we'll be all good. <laughs> Not so much. So then, <laughs> so then you take it from there, man. Oh man. Well, so then we diagnosed that the power steering pump was moving and it had play in it. Mm-hmm. So first we thought it was the shaft and then the pulley. Well, let me back up. Okay, so the Jeep that we're talking about was a Jeep that was built for rock crawling here in the Rocky Mountains. So it has big tires on it, has a big steering system in it, and in order to run that hydraulically, I need this special pump. And so this pump is over there. Well, we think... And when he says big tires, they're 40-inch tires. Yeah, they're... Eric, <laughs> they would only look small next to Eric. And next yeah. to everybody else, it makes... I mean, they would go over my waist. Right. Yeah. But it was kind of like we used those tires for some of those drifts. Like, we would have been oh, yeah. hosed in, the, like, my truck. Oh, in the mud, too. I mean, you kind of float on top yeah. instead of, you know, like, digging down. It was a mess. And so we, we were, like, it was useful. And the, this Jeep has been turned in from a rock crawler. And then I had my son. And I realized, well, you, you can't go do, like, Carnage Canyon because there's a higher chance of dying. And you need to make those dead decisions. And so I've turned this Jeep in from a rock crawler into, like, a overlander. So it's like a rock lander, let's call it, right? Because it still has all the, most of the rock crawling parts on it. It's just been changed and modified a little bit. And so it has this different pump on there. I'm like, well, shoot, if this shaft is broken, like we're, we're going to figure something else out. So we decide, because we got to get out of there because the sun is setting at this point in time. We decide to take the belt that we have off and try and run it as far as we can because we don't want Mm -hmm. it to just get chewed up again and get ruined. We have two batteries. So we're thinking, well, two batteries should run a headlight and wipers for a long time. 
and it's cold out, so we're like the engine's going to get hot for sure. But yeah, with it being as cold as it is, and the wind blowing in, hopefully it would air cool it enough just to get us out up on top, to a just road. to give us a yeah. little peace of mind where we're on a county road as opposed to being down in this <laughs> the four wheel drive yeah. only. Yeah. You know, you're not getting a wrecker into where no. we were at. You're not getting a regular wrecker in there. Right. You're getting a Matt's four wheel drive wrecker. <laughs> That's off road. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. And so we like Yeah. We make this decision. The sun goes down. So we're well, it's like that blue hour, right? So you can still see. We have like every light is off. I have a headlamp on so I can see all the different instruments. The gauges. So uh when you're traveling trying to conserve power, because we don't have an alternator. Can't see my gauges. <laughs> and other bad decision. We decide that we're going to go out because there's a road to the north side of us. We haven't explored it yet, but we're going to take that road to get to this county road that we've been on, but it's the northern part that we haven't been on. So there's probably three miles that we didn't explore on top of this four wheel drive part. And so we make this decision instead of just turning around and going back what we've already broken through and what we know and boy was it a bad decision because there's like some of the worst snow drifts we had the entire time on here right. it's, it's all, all uphill. uphill it was just and the drifts are on the uphill section so, so it's you're in like it <laughs> and it's just like yeah, bashing on the throttle and yeah. it, so the motor starts to get hot and i'm like i gotta shut it down and we lost oh so we lost the first battery because we had to use the defroster because it kept icing up because mm -hmm. we were in there and we were hot from changing everything. Um, the Jeep uses a bus system in the ECU, which means that it's constantly checking everything, which uses way more battery than we expected. Um, because there's no, like you weren't getting heat because the, the system's not turning. So you don't get that mm -hmm. heat coming into the, the cab. And so it's like, all right, well, I guess we're... And, well, we thought we would have heat, right? But guess what? You don't have heat when you don't have the belt because the... the I don't know why. It's not, probably the ECU. Water pump's yeah. not saying, yeah. well, the pump's not going, yeah. so we're not going to let this go. But we thought, well, it's still going to generate heat. Right. So you'd think that you would... And then that's a way to dissipate the heat, too, right? right? If you run yeah, a heater, yeah. if you're overheating, even in the summer, turn on your heater, and it'll help right. cool the engine down a little bit. So we were thinking that would be on our side, too. But you get in and go 100 miles or 100 yards, and you're like, oh, we got no heat. Right. So all these things are piling up. And I, at this point, I'm, I've got to this point feeling like we had a solution. But once all this stuff started happening, I'm like, hmm. It keeps piling on. <laughs> right. You start Close. losing confidence. <laughs> so the whole time we're trying to climb up out of this mountain and busting through these these things and the jeep's getting hot and we're like well we can't stop here but we gotta go i mean because you can see it it's like up yeah i'm think i'm now like thinking okay well we're staying this is night. gonna be one uncomfortable night but you know we're like we got one blanket we can cover both of us up we can put on every piece of clothing we have and we'll probably be fine we'll definitely make it we're not gonna yeah we had it. water food we had all that stuff yeah yeah we had everything but it's just gonna be it's gonna suck plus yeah. you still don't know how you're gonna get out you know i i have plenty of friends but they're all six eight hours away yeah so any rescue is gonna be another day before we ever get rescued if that comes to that so we get to the top finally and the last hill was just a monster like there's an edge on this side there's a giant ditch on this side and we were trying to run it in two-wheel drive to just oh because that's the other thing because all of this is going on fuel and you're getting like four miles per gallon because we're going so slow fuel is just glug 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 so we're below oh boy we're like, I don't know. We got to like three eighths. Of it was a tank like three eighths of a, tank. of a tank. Yeah, and we're like, okay, we can do. It tells you how much the mileage is, right? right. So I'm like adding up in my head. I'm like, we're not even going to make it back to town no. for this race. No. If we have to go four, <laughs> right. if we're getting four miles to the gallon all the way back, forget yeah. it. We're done. Yeah, we're doing like, well, if we're getting four miles per gallon, and it's ten miles, like, huh? That's yeah. that's going to eat most of this, and then. <laughs> Oh, it's just, it was bad news. And so 
we get to the top and it was just hot. And so we shut it down. Not like in the red, but like the motor was probably at 240 because the fan, the, the big fan had kicked on. We're on our second battery because I had, I have two systems in there. One's for like a house battery and one's for um, the engine battery. But you can link them up and jump it. So we had linked them already. So we're on our second battery. And I'm like, all right, well, Michael, let's let's throw. It's middle of like wind is blowing because we're up on top of this ridge. It's 18 degrees all of a sudden, pitch black. And we make the decision, well, let's install the one because we're going to spend the night out there anyway at this point. So we're like, well, let's install the serpentine belt that we have, limp it as far as we can because then we're that much further or closer to the road and we're just going to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So we get back in there for the fourth, third time, I guess, to put this all back together <laughs> and everything. And it works like it, it's holding together with Hanging hopes and there. dreams, but it's holding together. And so but we still, but have... we're not, we're totally <laughs> a bundle of nerves oh, because you're like, nerd. how long is this going to last? Yeah. I don't think it's going to last. I, I'm a disaster. No way. 100 feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's over. yeah we're... Well, it's just like the whole time you're just waiting for, you're just, you, you're driving something knowing that it's going to fail, but you don't know when, yeah. right? So it's like watching a train <laughs> like come towards you, but not knowing when. And it's just, so the whole time we're, we're trying to keep it below 2000 RPMs. So we're in four wheel drive. And we only have, let me just interject. We have like six miles to go. But this is six miles of untraveled road. I'd been on it before back in the day when I used to go, mm -hmm. 2017, whatever. So I knew it, it was the right road. I knew it was going to connect. But we're in the dark, and all we have is a GPS to say, well, I think it's around six miles. <laughs> and we go six miles at 2,000 RPMs, continue to bust through these drifts with enough power, but not enough to that we have to rub, run up the RPMs to bust yeah. through a drift. And then Brandon is like, maybe we should turn around. <laughs> and I just wanted to like throw him out of the Jeep and say, no way, I am not going to just, <laughs> well, because the, we're not going to lose kept getting everything worse. we just gained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because we get up on the top, that's what, oh, so like, man. he's neglecting to tell you that someone had plowed the top already, like a rancher or someone. And huh. there's like snow, like things that you make for snowmen, but they're just coming off the plow. They were like half the size of the Jeep. And so I'm thinking at some point mm -hmm. in time, like, what did they plow this for? Snow, yeah. Right. <laughs> and so, so we were able to cruise. We make the decision finally that like, all right, we're through the drifts. We need to conserve fuel. So let's, let's turn it into four or two wheel drive. And so we, but we got heat. So like we're feeling comfortable. <laughs> it's just, there's a failure point. The belt's holding. The belt's holding. The belt is like, but we're totally babying this thing. And so we get to a point where it's downhill and we know we can get to the county road finally. And it took us two hours to get to that point. So six miles took us like two hours because we were babying it so much. <laughs> and it's, then it's like, well, if we can get it to the pavement, which is another 15 miles, then that'll be better. <laughs> so we, we start babying it. But it's one of those like you're trying to like hypermile everything because you're running out of fuel and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And so we finally, we got it out of there. Um, we ended up doing the whole 45 m miles back to the hotel under 2000 <laughs> RPMs. We found a little gas station that Michael remembered was able to fill up for like 489. And it's like a typical Alaska station or yeah, you just yeah. have a pump on the right. side of the road and there's nobody <laughs> there, but you can run a credit card and you'll get gas. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so we made Savior. it into the hotel and it was just like one of those, like I backed it into the spot and it was just like a, oh my gosh, we did it. <laughs> Everything just melting. And I remember we get up to, so we still got to carry all our gear up there, right? Cause you don't want to leave it in the Jeep. We carry all our gear yeah. up there and Michael's over there searching like, yeah, I think it could be this, it could be this. And I'm just like a ball of nerves and I hit the bed and it was just like, okay, you got someplace warm. And I just remember crawling in there i don't even think i brushed my teeth now we're talking about this but i like crawled in and just like <laughs> went to sleep immediately God. just went to sleep yeah. i was like because it's like 10 40 by the time we got to the hotel it all started well, everybody needs to understand though too about all this is 
Brandon is very much like I am where if there's something that's, if your camera's not working or if a car is not working, if whatever is required to do your job is not working, it, you're just in a bad mood, yep. right? You're just mm -hmm. in that situation where you're like, I need it's to do my job. the only thing on your mind too. Yeah. And he's just consumed by, and I can see that and I am too, but I'm also, it's not my baby. You know, that Jeep mm -hmm. is not my baby. That Jeep is a form of transportation for me. Now I understand his feelings. So I'm kind of in that realm too, <laughs> but not to any close to the level that he's at. Like, you know, that you and I are not going to die out there. I think that's the difference, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm always of, um, like I'm in dad mode all the time, right? Like I got to take care of something and like make sure it. And so I feel like I fail sometimes when things don't go a hundred percent that way. Whereas like, you're a grown man. You've been through these things before. Like, I don't need to worry about you, but it's still in the back of my mind. Like I've failed in that regard, not failed, but like, that's where my mind always is of like, yeah. Oh my gosh, this Jeep didn't provide what we needed it to. But like, we're not going to die out there. We had plenty of warm stuff with us because we knew that that's an expectation. When you go out in the wild, you better be prepared to survive out there if things like this happen. So I think that's where my mind is always a little different, but like, and my mind is like, Oh shit. Right. We're not going to be able to film the horses in the morning. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, cause yeah. we had food, we had a fridge full of food. So I don't know. Um, and there's snow everywhere that we can melt. We had fire making stuff, so it'd be fine. Um, so, okay. So we get back to the hotel and we we're in a city, or not a city. It's a town that has a lot of farm stuff around it. So there's, there's a Napa, there's an O'Reilly's. So the Ace Jeep's hardware. Yeah. And so the Jeep's like, it's running. So we run around and we spend that next day just getting parts. And we finally, we get us some extra belts. We get two belts because we're going to replace one and we need one back for the Jeep, right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> and then there were some weird things happening. Like the, the power steering pump on the front side was threaded, even though everything that we found online said that you put them through the front. And we're like, well, how did the bolts back out through the pulley and not just wreck that pulley? And so it was just like mm -hmm. something that sat in the back of our mind for all day. And like both of us knew the answer. It probably doesn't thread through the front. It probably threads through the the back because you can't have a thread on a bracket on and then a thread on the pump and have those match up it's just never going to work that way right one has to be smooth and sure enough i had called the steering company i'd called a bunch of shops that i knew uh it was just no luck and so we i finally and we were convinced that the bolts had were had vanished yeah try this out for fun Try to figure out a bolt size on a car that, I, you know, it'll tell you how to put them in and give you all the instructions, but actually figure yeah. out, is it an M8? Is it an M10? And if it is, how long is it? And what thread yeah, count yeah. is yeah, it? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You can't find any of that stuff out. Ironically, <laughs> ironically, right across the street from the hotel is a Jeep dealership. <laughs> And this is a small town. I mean, it's yeah. not a big town. And I'm like, what are the chances there's a Jeep dealership right here? And those guys are the ones that are like, this is, we were just going to buy the bolts from them because yeah. we figured it's like super yeah. secret ninja information. They're not going to give it to us. But the parts guy was like, uh, good news or the bad news is, is I don't have them. It'll take a week to get them. The good news is, is here's the dimensions. <laughs> Go to Ace Hardware and buy them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, like small nice. town for one, the win. One win. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And so we... Yeah. But this is when we're still thinking that the bolts had vanished and the yeah, pump. Yeah. You could wiggle the oh, pump yeah. and you could see it wiggling. So you can... That's why that belt is creeping off. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, easy enough mm -hmm. fix. Once we figure out how to get a new bolt in there and get it tight, that pull you out of straighten up and it'll hold a bolt right mm -hmm. so that's two hours in our morning running from hardware store to auto parts Part store studio. we went to a napa auto parts and got a belt we went to an o'reilly and got a belt because right. we were we were in we just wanted to have every extra belt <laughs> yeah. in the whole town and then we got the extra bolts and then we did a little bit more digging. We did a little bit more talking and we're like, and then we went to ACE. It's, just, it's impossible. Cause here's the deal. Either the bolts backed out and it miraculously didn't screw up the pulley. Or 
when Brandon installed the pump three or four or five years ago, he forgot to put them in. Well, it's not going to run for four years without bolts, right? Yeah, sure. So I was like, it can't be that. You obviously installed it correctly. So then we're, our whole thought process flips. It's like, okay, well, maybe the bolts are in the back. So then you start looking at all the instructions from the specialty pump com or specialty, ste specialty steering pump company. And that's starting to make a lot more sense. Well, and then, and then, the, then they got back to And you to talked us. to the guy yeah, then we, from the actual pump company yeah. in Texas. And he, I finally was able to get in touch with because we'd left him a message the night before. I called him that morning. And I was like, I'm just going to call him again. So I called him again. And this guy's like, oh, yeah, when I used to work back in the shop, like we've had a few of those break, but those were the older ones. And I'm like, well, this is an older one, like one of the first ones that you guys built. And he's like, oh, yeah, that could have been it. And he just like says it nonchalantly. He's like, but if you have like this pump on the front, because I was worried about belt size. And I'm like, if this has to tighten up, like it just didn't seem right. And he made this like well, nonchalant, like, yeah, we've had some of those break. <laughs> I'm like, oh, huh. And so then it turns into, well, if this bracket's broke, how did you guys fix it? And they're like, oh, well, we welded it. And you're like, well, what is it? And they're like, well, it's aluminum. And so then all of a sudden you're like, well, we need someone that can TIG weld it. Yeah. So then we start searching for welders and we find one because it's a <laughs> like we're lucky. So we end up at this uh, guy's shop that welds <laughs> diesels and like big semi trucks. Yeah. His name was Jay and he was awesome. And he's like, take this magnet out there and touch it to it. And if it doesn't stick, I'm not going to do it. And yeah. so, of course, I stick it out there and it doesn't stick. And he's like, nope, I'm not touching it because sometimes on this cheap Chinese junk, you touch it and it blows up in your face and it'll put all thumb size hole in something and he's like i'm not doing it but <laughs> and there's that button it's like so like bated yeah. breath <laughs> he's like go down and see larry down here and larry will get you and that was his out. name larry yeah. and he's like he'll get you yeah. figured out <laughs> and so we drive down and we go to larry's place and larry's not there <laughs> He's on sabbatical. <laughs> he had to go to the doctor the that day. Month. And so he was going to oh, take okay. that day off. <laughs> uh, and so I'm like, is there anyone else? And this woman is not happy that I have walked into her little domain and yeah. asked for these things. And I'm just like begging and borrowing and pleading, like whatever. And she's like, well, let's go see if, if Dylan will help you. But otherwise, if Dylan can't help you, nope. And so I go back there and I'm just like, <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, I can do that. He's like, when do you need it? I'm like, like now, like, can we take it apart well, right there? Really and he's like, oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And he's like breaking down boxes yeah. and he like leaves. And so we just rip into it and we got it all taken apart. And sure enough, that company, which I didn't even think about it when I was putting it in, that company had taken these two brackets, stuck them together, drilled some holes in it, threaded it. And that's how they put that bracket together but they didn't weld it. And so they had used steel bolts into this aluminum and steel and aluminum mm -hmm. don't play well. And it yeah. snapped all three of, there was four of them snapped three of them. And we had one bolt that was holding that whole system together. So like, Oh my God, talk about hopes and dreams, man. It was just yeah. a mess. And so Dylan got it all welded up. We're like, we're good to go. Everything's fine. This guy, Thad, he would just show up to the shop and, and like, just talk to the guys. He's like, oh, yeah, I can get you those bolts. He leaves, jumps in his Jeep, just drives away, comes back. He has four bolts for me. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. Pay him the three bucks, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a typical where anywhere you go, you're just scared to talk to people. And people are afraid of the unknown. And so you're just like, you, 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 you're not an unfriendly person. They're not unfriendly. But there's no way to reason to interact. Right. When you start yeah, interacting yeah. with people, you realize everybody really wants to help out. Right. Yep. You know, everybody has kind bones in their body. You just need to be able to open up and talk to them. And we had to. We had no choice in the yeah. matter, right? <laughs> so these people were just oh, awesome. they helped Everybody us. we yeah. talked to was so helpful. Yeah. And so Dylan, yeah. he welded that That's thing awesome. up and fixed it. And uh, we got it installed and it went back together super easy. No. it Well, the bracket went back well, on super easy. the bracket easy. went back. And so everything is like tight. There's no moving bracket, like no moving power steering. Like it's been welded and it's super awesome. They bought like a special welder so that they could weld uh, aluminum sheet metal on the Ford trucks. That's why I had this special rig. Mm, yeah. 
Oh gosh. And then we had the wrong belt size. And so we spent the next <laughs> two hours. And we don't have a car, right? Right. Cause it's yeah. still taken apart. So yeah, and yeah. then where Thad had left, the guy that was kind enough to go down to ACE, you know, which was like a probably 15 minute walk. He was yeah. kind enough to like jump in his Jeep, run down and <laughs> get us the bolt, but he had left. So now we're like, well, now we got to walk to whatever Napa. And then we still don't know what size of belt. So it's like, okay, let's buy like four or five belts. <laughs> so I walked to Napa, buy like all of these belts. These guys are like, this guy's been in here twice buy already. He doesn't know what <laughs> he needs. Uh, and so I get back and Michael had taken apart the alternator bracket because we put up a belt on that the PSC guys had said, the power steering guys had said, is what they're this using the size you need and it yeah. it was like way too big way too big and mm -hmm. so we we walked got some different belts we found one that worked finally and we start driving everything's feeling good we test it i got footage of this again watch the youtube video because brandon is he went from a lowest of lows to the highest of highs <laughs> and we and oh yeah but that was for like four blocks and then go oh, ahead. God. Yeah. So like, <laughs> then we get this check engine light, and bing, and it's like, oh. it's that alarm. <laughs> it's those footsteps in a dark alley, right? Where you're like, I'm just gonna cut, cut yeah. through this alley, and you hear that footstep behind you, and you're just like, dang it, I thought it was gonna work, and so bing. So I'm like, all right, let's check it. So we go to Napa. So, well, luckily Michael had had the foresight. He's like, just go get all the receipts. And we'll just return everything because we had like four hundred dollars in belts. <laughs> so we return all the belts, and the the code was for a secondary oil pump. So on these jeeps, there's a dual stage pump. The below thirty five hundred RPMs, the pump will do a certain pressure, and then above that, because it's a dual valve train, it'll push these pumps up. And so the secondary pump has failed, supposedly on this. According to the code According reader. According to the code reader. And so yeah. I'm like, well, we'll just put a filter in it and see if it cleans it up. Because the filter is usually what triggers those on these Jeeps on the first stages. Oh, and let me just throw in here. In addition to all of this, <laughs> he gets a little thing on the dash that says oil change needed. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. right. <And> so uh, <laughs> Michael's like, why don't we just change really the oil? <laughs> I'm like, all right, fine. So he like cons me into this. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably a good idea after thinking about this. Like, let's not just do the oil yeah. filter. Because I'm just not yeah. thinking straight. Like, I'm in like. You're sure, you're stressed out. I don't know. I'm just not thinking Chaos. straight. And so he's like, just <laughs> change the oil. So let me ask the Napa guys, oh, do you guys take oil? And he, they're like, no, we don't. But if you drive way up here, there's a concrete barrier that everyone pours it into, and it's okay. And you're like, uh huh. It's a recycling center for the local town, so anybody yeah. can take their used motor oil and dump it in there, and then somebody must come someone suck picks it, it up once yeah. a month or something. Well, no, he said it used to be the recycling center, and that's well, they why they still had to sign up. And I was like, they used still had to a be. recycling. Like, center. is this just where everyone still dumps it type thing? But he said, <laughs> "Good luck." He said, "Hopefully, it's not full." Yeah, mm. he's like, "Good luck." So we. <laughs> We still had the tarp from Harbor. The, yeah, we went to Harbor Freight and picked up some moving blankets and tarps just because we had been soaked the night before. Yeah. And that, because we had to work on it the next day, right? And we didn't want to get completely soaked. And so we, we still had that. We roll it out. We do an oil change. It's like 15 minutes, maybe max. It, there's room in the tank. Everything's going good. We get it all fixed. Light goes away. There's probably only two quarts of oil in this Jeep, though, because I think when we were running it so hard, it got hot. I think it burped out a bunch of the fluid. Mm, yeah. And so everything's good the next, like we, that night, like I'm feeling, cause I went from high to low. Everything's <laughs> fixed. The code is gone. I cleared it. We're good. He went back to high. We went and ate a Mexican dinner and he wolfed it down. Like he, it was his last. Oh, I had a carne day. asada with like beans and rice and they had this delicious jalapeno. I even got a beer that night. And we, went, we were like, all right, well, after dinner, let's go up this big hill because there's this big hill. We tested it. Everything was fine. Fine. Lights worked. Everything's working. It's beautiful. We get up the next day. All right, we're, we're supposed to leave this day, but let's go out into the field. So we pack up all our junk. We go out in the field. Great day. Like some of the best interactions with the horses. I got some amazing photos with these horses. And they actually had simmered down. We could walk out to them. It was awesome. 
and we decide, okay, by noon, we better be getting out of here. So we decide, let's mm-hmm. get out of here. And it had warmed up. And all that snow turned into a muddy, muddy mess. And <laughs> it took us, it was 10 o'clock, 1030, I think, when we decided, like, let's start going that way. And we'd spotted yeah. a band of horses, so we'd stopped and photographed them. But we were on our way out. We didn't get out of the basin until one o'clock and most time it'd be like 40 minutes and it was just mud. There was mud everywhere. And I don't think, wow. I don't think my truck would have survived the road that we had to go out with that last bit of mud, Michael. I don't know what you think, but it was a disaster. There was chunks of mud coming off like the size of my head, just being <laughs> flung up by the Jeep. I'll put pictures in cause we took stills of the Jeep. It's just, you can't even touch the the door handles. <laughs> yeah, but coated. again, his he's got these super wide tires, that, and there's no fenders to stop it. Yeah, yeah, so it's like it's all I like fair. this big. It's got fenders. <laughs> yeah, it's not recommended to hit that road in March. What do you have to say for yourself? I hate mud, and. <laughs> Look at what And so we we go to get out and the check engine light comes on again. And oh god. <laughs> it's the secondary oil pump. Uh, and so we'd been checking like I was worried. So like every time we'd stop, it'd be like yeah. check the engine oil. Yeah, let's check the engine oil. So we checked it and it was yep. full the whole time. It wasn't overfilled, it was just full. And so we ended up driving from this place all the way to Denver, which is four hours less than 3000 rpms so like the pass to get up to eisenhower we had rabbit ears pass and then floyd hill which you need like all of the speed that you can possibly muster muster. and a rear wind in this jeep to get up these hills (laughs) and but we did it under 3000 rpms so now i have to get this jeep figured out of what i broke and what i busted i think i probably when i got hot the pressure probably rose and it probably pushed through uh a seal somewhere a seal. and we'll just have to get it fixed but we'll get it back done but yeah it was a learning experience <laughs> yeah i would say so <laughs> quite the adventure Gosh. the video is gonna be awesome horses. yeah you still manage some horses too which is great but <laughs> yeah it was. i well, hate then... those mechanical issues it's such a just takes you out of it mm-hmm. so quickly and your mind is just in a whole another spot. Right. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Well, and we had decent luck the first day, right? So we yeah. got those horses kind of interacting with each other. It was a couple, it was cool. It was a couple of small bands, a little horse or small bands, each with a stallion. And we didn't think it was that because they were so close. But once they started interacting and you see these two stallions going against each other, you're like, oh, this is two separate bands. They just happen to have an mm-hmm. agreement. But one got a little too close and we got this. So, you're riding this high, and this is right before the belt was, goes. So we're thinking, oh, man, these next two days are going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we have learned so much information. And based off yeah. of my prior knowledge and knowing where uh, we might be able to find some good spots. Yep. And I then got this in the bag. <laughs> that's totally what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. And then fast forward to that. And then we had every intention of fixing the Jeep, and, and we're like, okay, if we can be done by one, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. we'll have time to get back out there and at least get a couple of hours. So one passes and I'm like, okay, well, if we can get out here by two, two passes, I mean, it was, the sun was setting when we were changing the oil. So it was, was, Uh, there's no chance to get back out there. So it's like Bummerville, right? But it's just part of the adventure and it's going to happen to everybody somewhere along the way. Again, the YouTube video is going to be awesome because you get to see, I mean, (laughs) to have a car break down in this location, it was so beautiful picture <laughs> i mean that was the cool part i mean you, i guess if you're gonna break down it'd be great to break down there it's not like you're in some uh, ugly spot it was beautiful out there well but. and then trying to film like we filmed all of that but he has like my reaction on film because yeah. he was smart enough to pick up a camera and be like what just happened and i'm like i don't know and just, <laughs> like yeah it's, that'll be good oh. <laughs> So we ended up getting everything. I think you need to go back out there with, you know, if you're going to try to do horses and grouse and, oh, we did see a really cool coyote, had a good coyote interaction. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Sequence that 
I don't know, we're parked in the middle of this two-track road just sitting there with our cameras out because we just spotted some horses. And here comes a coyote just tooling down the road. And it's funny how sometimes wildlife is just like so out of it. I mean, they're keyed into the nature. Mm. But when there's something obscure out there and they look at you and they're like, they'll do a double take, but then they'll go back about their business. And he started rolling on the ground right in front of us. And oh, you know man. how playful uh, dogs will roll and then they lay their their head flat on the ground. Yeah, yeah. This coyote did all that. And I'm thinking, that thing is going to walk right up to us. Nope. <laughs> and he starts walking towards us. And then he's like, oh, wait a minute. Startles. <laughs> There's some big black thing with tires on it, right? In the middle of the road. What? And then all of a sudden he's like, ah. Yeah, but he wasn't terrible. I mean, it wasn't like uh, he's a persecuted no, he just coyote out like there. Went around. He just went you, around yeah. us and then just got back on the road and kept walking. That's so. cool. So there's coyotes. We saw some pronghorn out there. So there's the potential for that. Um, I would. We were talking. I think there's got to be some badgers out there. It's total badger habitat. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I've never seen one out there. They got to be out there. Um, there's fossils. If that's your thing. What are, what are they called? There's so many stromalites, stromalites or something. There. There's so much cool stuff out there. It's definitely a good spot to go. But I think what you need is five days. And then what you really want to do is camp out there. Like yeah. your van would be perfect out there, Eric. I think you yeah, would be okay. challenged on some of these roads in the van mm -hmm. for four-wheel drive. So you'd have to really kind of pick and choose where you go. But um, the van would be I, – I was scoping it out for my van, just thinking if I could get my van out there and if – if Brandon had his Jeep, or like we'd a have base transportation. Camp, yeah. yeah, we'd have a yeah. base camp. And mine is so long, I don't, there's a couple of little arroyos that yeah, I think I might get high centered and become a bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll set, we'll have to see. We're definitely going to try to head back out there. And in fact, you should come down with us. Mm -hmm. I think you need to find a cheap ticket. And, yeah, yeah. But then we got a bunch of corporate work coming up throughout the bunch of month of april and so now it's like ah are we gonna be able to yeah. fit this in yep so everybody check out the video because it's gonna be a good one it's gonna be like <laughs> full of highs and lows and just <laughs> good horse stuff uh, good jeeps it's like the adventure from start to finish yeah yeah well and there's gonna be those and moments the snow <laughs> added the whole other element yeah. right just that weather just was the whole yeah seeing those pictures of the jeep all covered in snow and mud and everything like oh man <laughs> didn't look like a walk in the park oh but, it's but so i think cool. your your van your van so the reason why i say eric's van could do it is he's got the four-wheel drive sprinter and, it's and i think having four-wheel drive and then the short version of it i think i think you'd be all right yep i don't think christy would let me <laughs> i nearly had to have a pickup truck helicoptered off a mountain in Colorado last time I was there. So uh, we'll have to leave the details out of that one. Don't let her see this podcast or the other video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember my, yeah. I called my wife at the top yeah. and I was like, hey Kristen, um just checking in with you, but here's the coat. And like what do they yeah. do with that? But it's one of those like I need to check in with her to make sure. And we have our Garmin sure, inriches yeah. and our Zolios and all that stuff. So like if one of us is injured we yeah. can get an sos out but it's just like checking it and i could just tell her like you stupid man you <laughs> did it again <laughs> like <laughs> yep <laughs> the good thing yeah. is is we were talking about doing a whole separate video which would be not wildlife at all but it would be preparedness video like do you carry an extra belt in your van eric I do not have one with me, but maybe I will <laughs> going forward. Exactly. I'm, I'm thinking yeah. now I have an old forerunner that is built a lot like Brandon's yeah. Jeep. Yeah. I have an extra belt in there, but it's an old thing. So you're like, oh, it's old. It might break down. Yeah. Let's yeah. put a, I have extra radiator hoses. I have all this stuff in that. But then fast forward to my truck that I would take here in Colorado, which is just mm -hmm. a regular old stock Tacoma. I don't think I have anything. Yeah. Like... You should probably carry an extra belt. You should probably carry some radiator hoses. You should probably carry, I mean, it's over. You could carry everything, right? You could carry an extra alternator, but how much stuff do you want to carry? Yeah, I know. That's I mean, there's a the limit. Balances, yeah. yeah, you just got to kind of figure out what that is. But, you know, I've had so many, we thought about doing a whole podcast on, 
actually we talked about it right brandon we were talking yeah, about i guess all the times yeah. where we've traveled and i know you've had them eric on the hall road because mm-hmm. you lost mm-hmm. your four-wheel drive on the hall road yeah i've driven back to alaska from alaska the last two years and got in limp mode in my van twice and brandon's like how do you do it how can you be like three thousand miles away from home by yourself <laughs> and your van goes yep. in the limp mode. I'm like, well, you call Eric on the phone. <laughs> well, but he told you, he he's him him sitting right. in front of a computer and he uh, helps you figure it yeah, out. But he also dropped yeah. that bomb of like, yeah, I don't have an extra serpentine belt in the van. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, don't even know, I don't even know where it's at. I don't even know if it has one. I don't even think I've ever looked at that motor more than just to change out the air cleaner. <laughs> I guess the audience, this is where maybe you could come in. Uh, if you are interested in some of those stories, number one, from the road, just traveling around and hearing some of the things that we carry to combat some of this, just let us know in the comments if that would be helpful or interesting and we'll get it in the books. We have some, some really interesting guests coming up, but we could add it in after the guests. Yeah. 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 Or if you got some really good stories, maybe you can, can type yeah. it down to like a paragraph. We can read it out too. Yeah. <laughs> and share some of those. Oh other. yeah. I would I like love that. to good idea. Yeah, I would love to hear the audience memories stories about <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's it's painful. I've had the check engine light. No, I couldn't get in four wheel drive check engine light, and I'm, you know, way north on the Hall Road. It's probably twenty below outside, and it's you know those moments are panic. But it's always nice when you have at least one other person with you, right? Because it's pretty lonely feeling when you're out there like that. But yeah, it's oh, it's always <laughs> always intimidating, but. Glad you guys are surviving and <laughs> made it through that all. Holy yeah, holy. the whole time we're like, this is going to be an awesome video. This is going to be an awesome video. <laughs> now, the one thing we didn't do, and I'm really disappointed, is we didn't shoot the nighttime. When we decided to put the belt back on, it was dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't think our footage would have been that great anyway. Um, I don't think we shot anything because we were at the end of our rope. We were like... Yeah we were getting really close to serious panic feel because it's like, yeah, and yeah. not that we're going to die, but like you're starting like, okay, to make, well, how are we going to sleep exactly. out here? And mm-hmm. then there's bigger issues. It's like, how do we get back to town? So we have to figure out somebody that's willing to come out and right. get us, whether it's a friend or we pay a record company or whatever, yep. you know, all those things start running through your mind. And we didn't record any of that, which is unfortunate, but I think there's an, there will be enough that it'll, yeah. it'll yeah, be for yeah. a long video anyway. So. Yeah. 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 But bottom line is the horses are super cool. They're all, um, and I noticed this a long time ago, they all have different personalities. Mm. All these stallions are, and you know how we get all enthralled with the moose and we get all enthralled with elk and every one of these big bulls or some of these cows all have their own little thing, right? And you just, the more time you spend with them, the more time you figure out, oh, well, this cow doesn't like people or this cow is always going to leave and go here. You just mm-hmm. figure out all this stuff. I think the more time you spent with these horses, you'd be, you'd be able to figure out oh, some yeah. really cool stuff. And you could find yeah, the ones that are them. like, you know, um, like the, you know, that if another band of horses shows up where this band's at, you better be ready for action, but it would just take a little bit of time to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah you know, you'd want a week or two in there to, to figure it. And I've never done it any, except for the springtime. So I don't know. And spring being from now, now is the earliest I've ever been in there, but all the way through May, I've been in there. Now, May, the problem is there's a lot of ticks out there. So you really got to be careful walking around. And Well, and we're going to, I'm going to go back out there in July. So we'll see how that is. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yep. Man. So long podcast, but I think it was a fun story. Yeah, yeah, those are good stories. Fun things to share. And I'll throw in a bunch of pictures on this podcast, but um, check out the video because it'll have tons more of real reaction stuff. I mean, to see Brandon (laughs) go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows, back to the high. I remember looking at him one where I'm just like, I was feeling like, you know, when you walk out of the barbershop with like a fresh haircut you're looking good. You're feeling lighter. You got your chest out. You're just, I, <clears throat> I remember getting in the Jeep, just like, yep, we did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> going, going to do the horses and just bing. And it was yeah. just like, oh, 
It's like, how? You can reset. Just yep. immediately. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. All right. Who's wrapping us cool. up today? All right. So, well, let's just. Uh, uh, well, here, hold on. There's one thing. Let's give a little teaser. But there's still spots on the bear trip. So if you haven't signed up for the bear trip and you want to go film bears, we have the photo tour for you. So go out to the Truth and Legend site. Go sign up. Call Dave. Dave was just famously, uh, what am I trying to say? In National Ge- highlighted. Thank you. Dave was highlighted in the National Geographic uh, article from Acacia. So that was awesome. Um, fantastic guide, fantastic boat. Yeah. AK adventures and Dave. So we run the trip with Dave, but he's the guy with the permits. He's the guy with the insurance. He's the guy with this guy, all this stuff set up. So our job is to fill up the trip. His job is to get the trip, all the logistics figured out, get it all set up. And he's so dialed in and he's so knowledgeable. If you guys listen to the podcast with Mike, Mike had nothing but good things to say about Dave and, yeah, if you want to have the bear experience of a lifetime, definitely check that out. Go to our site. Uh, I think we call it Photo Tours. I think so. I don't know what yeah. we call it. The link on the top, you can just follow that link right to the information. It's not an automated system because you do have to call Dave, and it's like you pay a deposit to a certain date, and then and then at a certain date, you have to pay the re- remainder of the thing. But he's the one that figures all that stuff out. Yeah. But I can guarantee you'll have the time of your life out there. Yeah. Um, and then what I wanted to do is I wanted to, our next upcoming guest, we lined up three different shows. Of three. Two. Was it three? Two. Two. So if you all listen to the Wild and Exposed podcast, you heard Doug Gardner. And we got Doug coming back on next, we'll record it next week, but it'll be out a week or two after that. And then we also have Kate and Adam Rice from Anchorage. Well, I think they're from Utah. I think their residency is in Utah, but they spent a lot of time in Anchorage. And they just recently opened up a gallery in Anchorage. So I thought it'd be fun to talk to them and just uh, try to get some little insight as to how hard it was to get everything set up and getting set up and what they plan on doing with it. And it's a slow time of the year right now in Anchorage, other than they just had the Iditarod. And they want that was their, their goal is to get started by then. But we're going to mm-hmm. talk to them all about that. So that should be a really interesting podcast. I did thought we had one other guest lined up. Well, we were talking about um, two others, but we I don't think we lined them up. We haven't got them scheduled yet. Yeah. Okay. But we got some good ones coming up for you. Yeah. All right, Eric, have a safe trip home and uh, keep us posted. And then we'll talk to you on Monday. Yeah. And then um, thanks for tuning into the podcast. I think we didn't even do an intro for this podcast, but I think it's episode 15. Is it episode 15 already? It's 14 or 15. Man. So... Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all your comments. Uh, Share it if you can. If you know anybody that might be interested, we'd 